Right, I'm going to talk about now how these different types of radiation that's emitted from radioactive materials can be of use to us. Uh, we all know that the radiation can be harmful and can cause cancer, but it can also be useful. So for instance, gamma rays, which are highly penetrating, if you remember, can be used, can be useful to us to treat cancers. Now, if you think about this patient here that's lying down, that's got lung cancer, you can fire a beam of gamma rays at the tumor, at the cancerous tumor. Now, because the cancer is growing quickly and it's growing quicker than the cells around it, it's more af affected by the radiation than the normal healthy cells. So the gamma rays have more an effect of killing the cancer cells than they do of the surrounding cells. So you can actually kill the cancer what you can also do to minimize the damage to the surrounding tissues and the surrounding cells is by focusing the beam on the tumor. Now, if you can imagine the tumor is this yellow dot here, that's the position where the tumor is. We fire the gamma rays that way. Now, all the tissue in the path of the gamma ray is going to be affected to some degree. Now, to avoid keep on affecting the same tissue, we change the path of the ray, so we'll change the path from here to position 2. So we turn the kind of gun that's firing the gamma rays to position 2, this is position 1 here, to position 2, and we fire it again at the tumour. So we target the tumour, but this time we're using different cells. So we're not using the same healthy cells all the time, we're not subjecting them same healthy cells all the time to the same radiation. We're just focusing our beams on the tumor cells. So that's one way we can minimize the damage to the rest of the healthy tissue. Now gamma rays can be useful as well as treating cancer. They can be useful to actually finding cancer. So what you can do is you can put in what's known as a tracer. So a material that emits gamma radiation is injected into a blood own into the blood only a very small amount of it and it will have a short half-life so it won't affect the body too much it will be soon removed from the body so you put the tracer which is got gamma rays and then you can look at the blood and where it goes to on something called a gamma camera and this is what's been done here we're looking at the lungs now the lungs, if they're healthy, will be different to ones which have a tumour, a cancerous tumour. So by doing this, we can see if the lungs are healthy or if there's a tumour and where the tumour is. So as well as treating cancer, gamma rays can also help to identify where cancer is. We can say it's diagnostic. It can diagnose cancer. Diagnostic. So as well as treating cancer, we can also use it to diagnose cancer. Another use for gamma rays is to spot leaks. Now, if you can imagine, this is a cross-section of some earth, and we've got a water pipe going under the ground. So we could have several meters here of earth between the water and the surface that we walk on. And if the water pipe spouts a leak somewhere along the length of the pipe. We're not going to be able to tell exactly where it is just by looking down from the earth. We might notice that this surrounding area has got a little bit wet and we might suspect there's a leak there, but to actually know where to pinpoint that leak, we don't really know. And this is where putting a, a tracer in again into the water material that emits gamma radiation, just a little bit of it, can help us tell where the leak is. Because the water is going to flow along the pipe, and where the leak is, it's going to spurt out. So this is radioactive material here, which is coming out. Now, if you take your Geiger-Muller tube, which is the detector for the gamma radiation, and it's going to start clicking away when it detects gamma radiation, and if you start taking measurements going across the length of the pipe, what you will find is that the counts will increase, it will increase and increase, and then it will slowly decrease. 
at the point at the peak will correspond to where the leak is where the count is the highest the radioactive count is the highest that will tell us where the leak is so it can be useful and then we have to use gamma radiation if you think about it for this because alpha radiation is not going to be penetrating enough it won't penetrate the several meters of earth neither will the beta radiation that's not going to penetrate the earth either so we need gamma radiation to do that now we'll choose a tracer that's got a very short half-life for this so in other words a, an isotope a radioactive material that doesn't stay radioactive for very long so then it becomes safe now the you measure something how stable a radioactive isotope is by something called the half-life so in this example here we've got on this graph we'll have a radioactive material here this is my radioactive material and we have our Geiger tube here next to it and we're measuring the gamma rays coming off it and that's coming off as counts so our Geiger, ca Geiger counter is counting the radiation now if it starts off as it does in this example here oh, I've just lost my pen or there is a, a thousand counts per minute now the time taken to decrease by half so half of a thousand is 500 so that time it takes to go to decrease by half is the half-life which in this case is eight days now the half-life works all along this curve if I was to go to 800 for example and draw my line down I think well how long will it take to go from 800 to 400 and I go across and down that will also take eight days it will take eight days to decrease from 800 to 400 similarly if I start at 400 and then I go along to 200 I can measure the half-life because it will take eight days to decrease from if I if I draw my line properly eight days to decrease from 400 to 200 so the half-life which we call T half is the time taken for the radioactive count to decrease by half now some materials which are very unstable have a very short half-life so they decay very quickly this one here for instance decays almost completely after 32 days which is quite short other types of material can take have half-lives of thousands of years it can take a very very long time for the radioactivity to decrease so material for example from nuclear power stations that stays radioactive for a very long time because the uranium has a long half-life and so it stays dangerous for a very long time and it can actually stay dangerous for several thousand years so we have to be very careful where we how we dispose of it to make sure that it's not going to affect anybody even in we've got to plan ahead really several thousand years for that